Oh, my name is Selo, um, Selo Ndlovu. Uh, full name is Selti Selo, but most people call me Selo. Um, I'm a professor here at VETS, a professor of metallurgy and metallurgical engineering. So I work in the field of extractive metallurgy specifically. Uh, the work that I do is I do teaching and research in the area of extractive metallurgy. So extractive metallurgy deals with the extraction of metals and processing of minerals um, from ores and other secondary resources or secondary sources of metals. Okay, so I work in the area of um, extractive metallurgy. So it's, it's metallurgical engineering and extractive metallurgy is a branch of metallurgical engineering. So if you look at metallurgical engineering, it's actually divided into two branches. One is extractive metallurgy and the other one is materials engineering. So extractive metallurgy is the one that deals with the extraction of metals from the ores. So we work hand in hand with mining engineers. The mining engineers go underground. They dig the, the rocks that contain the metals. Then they give it to the extractive metallurgist. The role of the extractive metallurgist is to remove the metals that were within the rocks and make them into solid products. And then after the solid products are produced, the extractive metallurgist hands over the metal to the materials engineer. The materials engineer is the one then that uh, changes the metals into day-to-day -day components that can then be used in things like computers or even your cell phone, your fridge, your microwave, things like that. So my role is really in the extractive metallurgy side. My interest is applying chemistry, mass physics, to develop processes and technologies that can make it easier to extract the metals from the ores. So we work in hand in hand with mining companies also to, to, to develop technologies that can make it easier for them to, to extract metals. We also, I also train students uh, in the knowledge uh, in, in, in processes and technologies that are used in, extractive, uh, in extracting metals from ores so that they can also go and work in the mining industry and then pass on that knowledge to the mining companies. So that is really what, what, what I do. Currently, I think some of my students, for example, are really interested in data analytics. They are also interested in using machine learning in terms of extracting met, uh, metals. So we are even now working with uh, people from the Department of Physics. So really depending on the direction in which the world is going and in which uh, some of the students, what some of the students are interested in, we can work with very, very different people. I also work with chemical engineers uh, on a very close uh, basis because most of our processes sometimes we have to uh, develop maybe reactors and things like that and uh, chemical engineers are very good in that area of developing reactors. I also work with the geologists because uh, most of the time some of the minerals that we are using we are, we are having maybe to extract metals from we need to understand their mineralogical structure so a mineralogical structure is talking about what type of an ore is it. I enjoy interacting with students and you work with the students. I know for instance sometimes when they write their first proposal and you read the first proposal and you say that oh this this is really clueless but they keep on doing it and then maybe after five or six drafts you say okay this is a good draft. What I usually do is I will say check your first draft that you submitted and then check your, your draft that you have now that you are submitting to the to the faculty. What do you think? And when you see, you know, when they look at those two documents and they see the difference, what they've actually learned, how they've moved forward from the day they walked in and to where they are right now, and the smiles that you have on their face, for me, is actually really one of the most fulfilling things about my career. Yeah, I grew up in Blawayo in a township called Entumbane. Um, I grew up in a previously disadvantaged family, so we're not, a, we're not very rich. So when I was in school, I think primary school, my teacher introduced me to the library and I think that really made a very huge difference to my life. Um, I, could, I used to love reading a lot of fiction because it allowed me to escape from my environment, I think, and it also allowed me to imagine a different world from the world that I lived in. You shouldn't really limit yourself and I think you should do what you love and for me I think doing what you love is the most important thing because if you have got love and passion for something that you want to do you will not let any obstacles go in your way. Uh, if you find uh, challenges in front of you uh, don't let them uh, you know, step, stop you from uh, achieving your aspirations. You must find alternative ways that can still help you to get to where you want to go. So I really believe that uh, the future is actually for women engineers. I don't really think that uh, um, it's, it, this mentality of saying that engineering is not for women, 
I think that is a, a thing of the past. The future belongs to women. So go for it if you really love, you know, if you want to be in these STEM fields, you must go for it.